jump into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is our regular warm up like we always do when you come into the studio. So we're going to be on your mat, on your back, and we're going to start with 10 glute bridges. Push into your heels, lift your hips. Here we are, end of the day, Tuesday. Hopefully it was a fairly not too crazy Tuesday for you. I know I've been trying to catch up with everybody who I haven't seen or heard from, and everyone that I haven't seen yet is like, oh my gosh, things are just, work is nuts. So I'm so glad that you guys can make it to these classes. We're gonna come on to all fours, and then we're going into that cat cow for five. Because a lot of folks definitely are telling me they'd like to, but man, life's just a little rough, it's kind of crazy right now. So we're making the best of it. We're gonna get a good hour in today. From there, come to that T-spine for eight. We'll be just under an hour. This has been taking about 50 minutes or so today. The circuit itself will take about 45, and then we'll have five minutes to stretch at the end. After we get eight, we're gonna switch to that T-spine on the other side. So we're taking the elbow and the shoulders to the side, up to the ceiling. And then from there, once we finish eight, we'll come to our bird dog. So we're going to be hand below the shoulder and knee below hips. Extend one arm and one leg out. And then we'll switch sides. Pushing into that hand that's on the ground. So we're really creating stability there. I'm going to be talking a lot about this uh, high position, so both in high plank and on all fours, and how important it is to stack your joints. So we want that hand to line up so that the elbow is right below the shoulders. Even in this bird dog, right when we warm up, we want to start thinking right away about that positioning. Just moving through, nice slow control here where we're pointing the toe down, flexing the heel. Once we've done 10 of those on each side, we'll stand up. And from there, we're going back with the arms. So we're going to go 10 circles back, 10 forward, or you can use, if you have a band like Victoria has there, you can do your regular band dislocation. This is what we're doing to make the best of it. So if we don't have a band. Most everything today is going to be body weight. There is one exercise in that last circuit that I will give you the option of using a dumbbell or something weighted if you have it. But you're still going to get plenty of work even if you don't have a weight or a dumbbell to grab, it's still going to be plenty challenging for us, especially that last circuit. From here, to finish out our warm up, we're going to do five toe touch squats. So arms up, round it forward, grab your toes, arms inside the legs, lift your shoulders and chest. Then we go right arm, left arm, stand up. That's one. We're doing five of these. So bending down, drop that knee, right left foot up. We have three circuits today, and each circuit has three exercises. We'll do all three exercises back to back, very little rest in between, and then we'll rest when we finish the circuit, and then we'll repeat that until we've done that circuit three times, and then we'll move on to the next circuit. From here, we're coming into those gate openers. So we're going up and over. Try not to let your hips dip into one side, so we want to be strong and stable on that standing leg. Sweeping that across. We've got 10 of these on each side. This is four. I will show you options today to make this more challenging or less challenging. And kind of meeting your body where it is today, depending on what the knees and the back specifically in a couple of these exercises are saying to you, I will give you uh, suggestions for how to adjust for that and make sure we're still being challenged, but we're not going to cause any issues or have to push through pain. All right, I'm taking this off. It's warmer than I thought. Our first exercise, we're going to do the right leg first, and this is a split squat or a reverse lunge. So to start with, you can do a regular split squat. This is going to be a little bit less challenging, and you can mod you could modify this by doing a smaller split squat. If you want to make it harder, start with your feet together, step back, 
Then drop down into your split squat, press up, bring your foot back in. So that's going to be our harder level. We're going to do all on the right side first, your right side's in front. We're going to do 45 seconds, ready, go. So I'm going to start with that uh, level one option of just the split squat. You could also keep this smaller to make it a little bit easier on the knees. Harder is going to be step in, step back, and now press up through that front foot. So you're really going to drive off of that front leg if you're doing this reverse lunge to bring your leg back in. So you want most of the weight in that front leg. You're halfway there already. Whether you're stepping in or staying stationary, push into that right heel. Shoulders back, chest up. You guys look awesome. Last 10 seconds. I might be moves at the top of my head in that camera shot. I can't see myself because I like to watch you guys. Three, two, last one here. Let's switch sides. Left foot forward. So we're either right foot back or we're going to start with the feet together and then step the right foot back. Ready and begin. Dropping that knee. So even if you're doing a reverse lunge, we're still going to end up in split squat. Whether you're bringing your feet in or staying stationary, that back leg is going straight down, perpendicular to the ground. The weight is in the front heel, and this left side butt cheek is really driving you up from that low position. So we're coming down, press up. If we're stepping in, we're driving off of that foot, bringing that leg in, using your butt. You have 10 more seconds here. Listen to your knees. How low can we go? Make sure that the knees feel okay. But challenge yourself a little bit. Last one here. And relax. Next exercise is called out, out, in, in. Because the feet are going to go out, out, in, in. Low impact. Stay with flat feet. And we're going to go out, out, in, in. Make sure you pick your feet up. High impact. We're going to lift the knees like we were jogging in tires. Where you're going to put that foot in the hole of the tire. Make sure you're picking up your feet. 30 seconds. Ready? Here we go. So low impact. We're going out, out, in, in. It's not a huge step, but I want you to pick up your feet. Higher impact. It's like a little jog, kind of like our quick feet, but we're taking our feet out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. You got it. This is it. Halfway there. Pump those arms. 10 seconds. We have one exercise left in this circuit. Coming up on five. Keep those feet going. Four, three, two, one. Okay. If you have a piece of furniture that you can put your hands on and you want to elevate your mountain climber, you do it just like that. And make sure that that piece of furniture is not moving. Don't let it move. Otherwise, you're coming down to the floor. High plank. Hands right below shoulders. We're going to go knees to chest. Slow and control. 30 seconds and three, two, ready, go. This is going to be core, not cardio. So nice and easy. If for whatever reason that is not going to work, you can also do a standing high knee. Totally okay. If your hands and wrists are not going to be Comfortable in this position. 10 seconds. Take your time. Be sure not to round your back. Nice flat back, just like a plank. Three, two, one. All right, this is going to be a short rest. And then the rest will get longer as we go through the workout. Because this first circuit, everybody today has been like, okay, <laughs> I'm ready to go again. So we're only taking about 30 seconds rest. We're going to come back into that split squat or reverse lunge, starting on our right side. Both legs, then out, out, in, in, then mountain climbers. We've got two more times through this circuit. So while you're resting, nice big deep breaths. It's our first big circuit. So you're out of breath, but not quite as much as you will be towards the end of the hour. All right, right foot is either forward or keep your feet together. Step back and down. Ready, and here we go. So if you're stepping, drive off that foot here. Otherwise, we're in that stationary split squat. If you're comfortable and you can get that knee to barely touch the ground, I want you that low. If your knees do not tolerate that, you know, when we're here at the studio, we have straps we can hold. We don't have that right now at home. So we are going to allow for a little less depth if 
the knees need that modification. Sometimes we have to work with what we have. You guys are doing great. Halfway there, well, past halfway, you have 15 seconds. This is 45 seconds. So, okay. So, really push through that front heel, keep that weight forward, but make sure your body is going straight up and straight down and not forward and back. Relax. Nice work. Switch sides. So, we're going to take that left foot forward, the right foot back. You can either start with your feet together or stay here. Ready? Here we go. Drop it into that left front heel. Or you're driving up and stepping in. Your choice. Whatever you did on that right side, you got to do it on the left side, even if it's your weaker side. Yeah, awesome. You guys are great. Arms can kind of do what feels comfortable or what helps you focus on form. So maybe it's like bringing those arms down in front, press through. I don't want you to push onto your thigh. It's the only thing I'll ask that you not do because we don't want to add any weight in this leg. If we're having to push off, then I would suggest maybe holding onto a piece of furniture and keeping this smaller. 10 seconds. You guys are doing amazing. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. We're going out, out, in, in. I'm gonna do low impact. High impact is here. Ready, and three, two, ready, go. So low impact, you're staying low in the feet, but you're picking them up. High impact is gonna look like a little bit more Picking up the feet, picking up the knees, and running that out. This does not have to be low intensity, because if we're squatting low, we're still using your legs, my heart rate is still getting up sky high, 10 seconds, feel my legs going, woo, fire! It's just easier on the joints to do it this way. And relax. All right, if you're not comfortable on your hands and wrists, do standing knees, otherwise, Either on an elevation of furniture or on the floor, hands below shoulders. Three, two, mountain climbers, knee to chest. Now, this is core and upper body, not cardio. I don't want you looking at this like it's cardio. I want you to take your time, go slowly. I might need to move back a little bit. Yes, awesome job, guys. Halfway done, halfway done. Knees in and out, 10 seconds. Keep your weight so that your hands are below your shoulders and your weight is shifted forward. Three, two, one. Stand up, we're gonna be a little bit longer. Break. So if you need water, let your heart rate come down first. Catch your breath. Nice big deep breath. Then we're getting some water. Don't go. A little sits. All right, so we have two rounds down of that first circuit. We're going to do one more, and then we'll change it up. We'll move on to our next circuit. You guys are doing great. 30 seconds left. Our next circuit is a little bit lower impact, but it's high intensity. Today is a lot about strength. We're working on strength. In our last circuit, we're going to get a lot of upper body. So a little bit of cardio. Definitely your heart rate's up because we're moving those big muscle groups. But we're focusing on strength today. 10 seconds, we're going to start with that right leg, going into that split squat. So set up for it, either feet together, or start in a split squat position, tuck your tailbone, and here we go, down and up. Press into that front heel, keep the weight towards the back of the body. If you're stepping in and up, I want you to really drive through that front foot. Try not to put a ton of weight on that back foot. It's just there to kind of catch you, and then your front foot is what's coming in using the strength to drive you up, not propelling off of that back foot. You're halfway there. Remember here in our regular split squat, that knee is going as low as you can possibly go comfortably without aggravating the knees. Ten more seconds here. Amazing stone work, you guys. Oh my gosh, we're so close. Five, four, three, Two, last one, you got it. Switch sides, left foot. Right into it, three, two, ready, go. So we're either here or we're stepping. Totally up to you. Listen to your body. It's gonna be telling everybody. It's about what is gonna make you feel challenged, but confident and uh, strong and good. Not beat your body up right now, we don't need that. Really ever do we need our bodies beaten up? No but especially not right now. 
20 seconds. Keep checking in. Are we tucking the tailbone? Is that back leg going straight down? If you're stepping back, make sure not to take too big of a step because we don't want too much of an angle on that hip when you step back. We still want that perpendicular back leg. Four, three, two, one, and done. We're going into that out, out, in, in. I'll do low impact in three, two, here we go. Out, out, in, out, out, in, in. So, it's gonna get your heart rate up, it's gonna get your breathing a little heavier, that's okay. As we got a break coming, that's when we get to catch our breath. So push through, it's only 30 seconds, not very long. So think about that from a pacing standpoint. You shouldn't feel like you could keep doing this for another minute. Then you're not working quite hard enough. Although we do have mountain climbers left to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Take it down, either to the floor or on a piece of furniture. Hands below the shoulders. Three, two, climb it out. Knee in, knee out. I keep coming too far for a period. So we're going in and out. Press those hands down. Nice flat back. This is core and upper body, not so much cardio. 15 seconds, so slow it go. You got it. Last time through here, we're done after this with these climbers. 10 seconds. Stay tight. Try to keep your back from rounding. Four, three, two, one. Awesome job. We have a minute to rest. Take this first 30 seconds or so to let your heart rate come down, turn on the fans if you need the fans, get a drink. And then I'm gonna start talking through this first exercise of our second circuit. So again, we're gonna do lower body. We're gonna do right side first, then left. You're gonna have a couple options of level. We're gonna do 45 seconds per leg. So, level one is gonna be planting the feet, push back into your hip, Bend your knee and we're coming into this like lateral squat. So from the front, it looks like this. What I want is this knee and ankle and foot all lined up. And you've really got to push your butt back so that we're not doing this, we're not doing this. Push your butt back, lean forward. That's level one. Level two, we're going to have three options on this one. Level two is to very much like we just did, start with your feet together, step out, Sit back into that side lunge and drive up to standing. So when you step out, make sure you come into that same position. Level three, if you really want the challenge today, is to step out, lunge down, press off that foot, drive your knee to your chest. Right back down. So I'm not even setting my foot down. I'm just going straight down and out, drive the knee to the chest. That's advanced if you want challenge. I'm gonna do lowest level. We're gonna start on right side. Feet apart, and here we go. Push the hip back, lean forward. So I'm going to take those arms forward, sit your booty back. You can add that challenge by coming in with the foot, or drive off that leg, pull the knee to the chest, nice tall. So when you come here, I want this straight and strong. Otherwise, then just stay with this in and out to make sure that we're ready for that challenge. I'm sticking with level one. Make sure everybody, you guys look good. Yeah, Victoria and Becky look great. We're sitting back. Emily, I'm sure you look great too. I just can't see you. We have five seconds. Just make sure you're sitting back into your booty. Three, two, one. All right, we're going other side. So remember, sit back. Sometimes the other side, especially if you're right body, left feels kind of funky. But let's set it up. Everybody pop that hip and then lunge into it, so we're down and up. Now you can add that out and in with the foot if you would like, or that knee to the chest. Driving in, driving through the outer edge of your legs, so we're into that booty cheek. So you can keep this low. It's still gonna be super challenging. You're still gonna feel this all through that side of the right leg. Make sure you're leaning forward, sticking your butt out. Very much like a squat. We have 15 seconds here. You guys are doing amazing. Last 10, those arms reach forward so that it helps us sit away. Three, two, one, all right. Next exercise is kind of like a modified reverse walkout. So, two options. Again, if you have a piece of furniture and you're not 
comfortable coming all the way to the floor, you can use a piece of furniture. Let me show you the full thing first, and then we'll modify. I just have not as much room as I usually do. Arms are going to go up. Hands to the floor. We're going to bend the knees and kind of crouch, kind of like our toe-touch squat reach. Then right foot back, left foot back. High plank. Right foot in, left foot in, stand up. It moves quicker than that, so it's not quite that slow. But we want to make sure we step into that full high plank. You could use a piece of furniture. Up, crouch, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, stand up. So you do have the option to not go all the way to the floor if there's something to put your pants on. We've got a minute, and here we go. So arms up, get to the floor, crouch down, right foot back, left foot back, right foot in, left foot in, right foot in stand up. Reach the arms up high. Make sure that your arms are inside your legs, so your legs are wide, so we're opening up through the hips. That is going to help support your low back by giving you more room through your hips as you come down and step back. When you step back, we're in a high plank. You have 30 seconds. If you're using support, same deal. Pour back, back, in, in, and up. And we're coming into that supported plank just with a little bit of elevation. Everybody's got something around the house, a desk, a table, maybe a coffee table. If it won't move, you guys are doing awesome. 10 seconds here. Make sure we get all the way down into that crouch. Back, back, in, in, up and reach. Three, two, one. Awesome job. So, watch me while you catch your breath. We are going to lie down. We have two options here. The first is a lot more challenging on your low back. What you do is basically a boat hold if you've never done boat in yoga. Pull your knees and your chest towards each other. If the legs are straight, that's much more challenging. It's going to burn a lot more here, so you can be here. Now, because it's hard to maintain uh, a flat back in that position, it can be difficult on the low back. In which case, you would lie down, and then instead of a hobble hold where we're extending out, we're going to pull in. And still try to imagine pulling your knees towards your chest, pulling everything tight, and pulling that low back flat. So you're either here, or you're up here on your tailbone. Listen to your low back. Take it down in three, two, one, and bring up the pose. So, both pose is definitely challenging for the hip flexors and the quads. So, if those are cramping and burning, you again should lie back and then just focus on trying to pull everything your legs, your knees, your shoulders, your chest. Your belly button, everything down towards the mat. Squeeze it in, squeeze. We're creating our own resistance by squeezing all that tight. Pulling everything together. Squeeze your legs together. Three, two, one. Woo, relax. If you were doing that with intensity, ooh, it's hard. I feel out of breath from all that squeezing. Take your time, stand up. We got a rest here. So that was one round. Of round two, we kicked it up a little bit on that second round. So we're going to take this full minute to rest. And then we're coming back into those side lunges. Remember your options. You had stationary side lunge. You have in and out side lunge. And you have knee to chest side lunge. Tall here. I want this to be strong and stable and not real wobbly. It's got to come down and then whoosh, you should be able to freeze that in place. 15 seconds, now come back into that right side side lunge. Couple deep breaths. <sighs> hey guys, you're halfway done. Almost. You're doing great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing good. I got the thumbs up from Victoria. Awesome. All right, side lunge on the right leg. Ready, go. So know that you do not have to step the foot in, you can keep this stationary. It's easier on the back, it's easier on your balance, but it's still challenging for your butt. But you're more than welcome to bring that in, or try that knee driver, drive the knee to the chest. Remember, stable, tight, strong with balance. We're gonna keep pushing into that right side hip, drive that booty back, back, back. 15 seconds, you guys are awesome. Second set's always better than the first in my mind. The third, I can't say the same. 
same thing, be better. Second set's always like, okay, we've done it once. Three, two, one, left side. Second to set up, push your butt back to pop your hip, and here we go. Push it out. Really think about that left knee, kind of pushing it out towards the outer edge of your foot so that you know that you're wading into the side of your hip. And if you're stepping the foot in, since we're kind of in the air and then that foot's got to land, try to make sure it's landing wide enough so that the knee, ankle, and foot line up and are putting a lot of added pressure on your knee. 20 seconds. Strong work. Be sure to breathe. You would want to exhale as you come up. Inhale and then exhale, drive through that heel. 10 more seconds. Amazing work. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. Coming into that little modified backwards walk out. You can use something to elevate your hands. Make sure that you're getting all the way down in that crotch. And then high plank when you step out the feet. We got one minute ready. Here we go. Arms up. Take it down. Step it back, back, in, in, stand up and reach. So it's down, back, back, in, in, stand up. Awesome job. What that looks like if you need to use something to elevate your hands, just as if whatever you put your hands on was the floor. It's the same thing. You go out, out, in, in, stand up. Reach your arms up. Let's see some jazz hands. You got it. Yeah, that's back. Good work. 30 seconds. Yes, good. You guys are doing great. Nice big extension through the arms. Keep the legs wide, step it back, bring it in, stand up, reach, woo, 15 seconds. Don't quit, don't stop, stay with it. You've got 10 seconds here and you're doing amazing. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. Couple deep breaths. So we'll sit first, kind of set up for that bow. Because if you're real out of breath, I want to make sure you catch up a little bit before you lie back if you're doing that lay back version. So either way, we're trying to pull everything up, chest out, nice tall spine, or you can lay all the way back and do it this way. In three, two, ready, go. So we're going to lift and squeeze. Pull it all in. Whether you're up on your tailbone or you're keeping your low back on the ground, you're pulling everything in. Try to imagine opposing magnets. So as you're trying to pull your chest and knees together, they're opposing each other. So you have resistance that you're fighting. That's your muscle contraction, 10 seconds. We can create our own challenge here. Four, three, two, one, let's rest. I feel like the second round always goes faster than the first two. Probably does, because I don't have to explain it again. But you've got a four minute rest. We're gonna do one more round. And then good news, all the single leg work is done. We're gonna do some two foot, so a bilateral exercise um, for our last circuit. But then it's gonna be a lot of upper body. We get some upper body strength today. Uh, get some shoulder challenge, it's gonna be good. So grab some water, get about 30 more seconds to rest. Nice chance to breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. It's already Tuesday night. My goodness. These, this week's gone by fast so far. But the weeks are so busy, it's the weekends when it's like, ah, too much idle time. 10 seconds. We're going to start on that right side with that side lunge. Last set of these. Here we go. Ready? And lunge it up. Down and up. Push back into your butt. Arms forward. Squeeze. Tuck your tail. Keep that an eye on that knee and the ankle. Is everything lining up nice? Drive up from there. You can also step in. If you like, you can also bring that knee up if you like. Whatever is working to challenge your body today. And we're keeping that nice good form. We're sitting back into the hip. 15 seconds. You're feeling it in your booty. Top of the thigh is going to get it too. But I want you to really push your butt back. And lift that knee. Or stay stationary. Give me at least two more. We got three, two, one. Awesome job. Way to push through. Left side. Big breath. Here we go. Left side. Clock is running. Down and up. Press into that foot. Drive that butt back. Last side of these. Last side, last side. We don't have to do 
with any more of these. Remember, you can make this harder if you like. You can bring that knee up if you want to. Find that place for you where you're like, I know this is the hardest for me that I'm capable of, and I'm challenging myself, but I'm rising to that challenge. And it makes me feel good, 15 seconds. It does. How many times do I have clients in here who think they couldn't do something and they do it? It feels so good. Less than 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, last one. Awesome job. All right. We're going into that walk out, walk back. One minute, last time. Ready? Here we go. Arms up. Find the floor. Step it back. Back. In. In. Stand up. And reach. You got this. Down. Back. Back. In. In. The nice thing about this is if you're really out of breath, you can slow this down and you can make it as long of a break up here at the top as you need. You also have that option to use something to elevate the hands if it's going to bother your low back. Good choice for you. We have less than 30 seconds. So we don't have to speed up. I want you to stay with it. Find a nice pace. Try to hold with that pace. Big reach up. 15 seconds here. Back, back. In, in, up and reach. Such great work. 10 seconds. You guys are so strong. Going to get at least one more. One more. Three, two, one. Yes. Nice work. Oh, oops. Here we go. Couple of breaths. Taking it down. Last boat hold or reclined boat. Doesn't matter whether you're sitting up or lying back. What matters is you're squeezing everything tight in towards the middle. Three, two, ready. Oh, let's squeeze. Let's lift. Chest up, shoulders back. Even if you're leaning back, that's okay because that's going to help keep your spine straight. If you're lying back flat, just pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. Try to get your chest closer to your knees. Squeeze your legs together. Breathe deeply, 10 seconds. It's all about that nice, good, deep breath. You guys are so amazing. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest. All right. All right, one minute rest. If you have weights or you have something that has weight, <laughs> we were joking this morning, one of the clients grabbed her dog like she was going to use her dog. It was so cute. But I don't recommend a dog for this exercise. But what you can do if you do have a dumbbell is you could use a dumbbell. I actually have a client who's been using like a, a jug of water, like a heavy water jug. Um, but you don't have to. I'll show you how you can do this with or without a dumbbell. And most of you ladies have learned deadlift progression with us. So if you started with us and we weren't doing deadlifts with weight, the first thing that we did was a wall hinge where we're going to flatten out the back and work on that flat back deadlift position. So what we're going to do here is that hinge. So if we don't have a weight, it's going to be hands on hips, shoulders down and back, chest out, bend the knees, crown of the head comes to the opposite wall, push your butt back, and then push your feet down and start to squeeze. If you have a weight, or something to hold, holding it at your chest, and then that same exact thing, keep your shoulder blades tight, and you're gonna feel how that forces your core to really work so that we don't round it. So either way, we're going for one minute, ready and begin. So if we're waiting, we're here. Shoulders back, push your butt back, make sure your knees are bent, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your butt cheeks. If you're not leaning, your hands are on your hips, Shoulders back, chest out. Everybody make sure your knees are a little bent. Yeah, looking really good. The only thing I'd like to see is I want those eyes to go down. So the eyes follow the shoulders and the chest and then they can come up when you come up. But I want the eyes to travel down the wall until they're looking straight down at the floor. That's gonna keep your neck in line with your spine. Yeah, better, nice. Keep your booty, squeeze it tight at the top. Open up here. And then here, I used to like to coach this and say, if you think about your butt like fists and your hamstring muscles, the back of your legs like fingers, as you bend forward, 
your fingers open up, that's your hamstring stretching, and then curl your fingers in and tuck your butt, you make a fist. Kind of an interesting analogy, but you think of it like that. We're going down, the hamstrings open, then the hamstrings contract, and we finish at the top. Go ahead and rest. Nice work. Next exercise, couple of options here. So, this is going to be challenging on the wrist. If you have wrist issues, you will do a forearm plank, and you can also do a forearm version of this exercise. We're going to be a high plank, so we're going to have hands below those shoulders, and then we're going to push back into a downward facing dog. Downward facing dog means that your weight is going from mostly upper body to mostly lower body, and then we're going to come back, and we're just literally rocking back and forth. If that bothers the wrist, you can come to a forearm plank, and then take your hips up, hips down, hips up, hips down. Modification for either one of those planks is to simply hold plank. Let's try it with that downward facing dog, come into that high plank, press down the hands, lift the hips, send them back, head comes between the hands. So we're going to look down at the mat, and then as you come into that down dog, you're going to look back between your feet. Then your eyes return to just right out in front of your hands. Shift your weight back, give your wrists a little bit of a rest. Bring it back in front. You can always stop and hold plank. You can also drop to your forearms. We're at 30 seconds here. So really important to line those arms up right below your shoulders. If they start to get way out in front of you, when you come into that down dog, your hands really shouldn't move. You're just going high plank, Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Heels do not have to touch the floor. We're going to really try to send those hips to the sky. Ten seconds, so close. Strong work, strong work. Keep breathing. Here's five, four, three, two, one. Set the knees down. Maybe roll those wrists out a little bit. It's a lot of wrist work. And then you're going to find a wall. Hopefully you can sit. If you cannot sit, you may stand. You guys all know wall slides. We're going to slide our arms up. Keep your rib cage down. Pull everything in. If for whatever reason you do not have an available wall, pretend the floor is the wall and do them this way. You can do it that way if you have to. Otherwise, find the wall. Yeah, even if there's a window on your wall. It's okay. It's fine. It'll work. I'm going to set the clock and tell you when it starts. So go ahead and get in your position here. Three, two, ready, begin. So, our goal on our wall slide is to try to only go as high as we can without our arms coming off the wall. And everyone's going to be different. Some folks have real tight shoulders. It's only going to be about this far. That's okay. What I want you to imagine is that you had weights in your hand, and you're pushing the weights up. And now you have a cable in your hand, and you're pulling the cable down, like a lap pull down. So we want to imagine weight. Push the weight up, pull the weight down. Push the weight up, pull it down. Make sure you're pulling your ribcage back if you're trying to get your ribcage to touch your spine. Just slide it up, slide it down five seconds. That is an upper body exercise if I have a problem. Shake it up. We've got one minute rest. Couple of things after this circuit that might be helpful while you're resting is maybe a couple of neck and head rolls after all those wall slides, and then some wrist rolls after all that down dog. This is our last two circuits. So we've done one of three, now we've got two more. Starting with that hinge flat back, with a weight of a dog, then our plank to down dog, then our wall slides. That's it, just two more of those, and then we're done for the day. Strong work already today. You guys, these, every one of these that I do goes by faster. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it's already, we're almost on our last one. It's only my fourth time doing this today. I feel great. <laughs> one more to go. Oh, I'm going to be so fit, you guys, it's crazy. It's just, it's awesome, I love it. Although, it is a little tough on the body, a little bit, but it's going to be fine. I would have it no other way. I love this, you guys. I would be doing nothing else with myself right now. All right, grab your weight or put your hands on your hips. One minute on the clock. We are hinging, shoulder back, chest out. Lean forward, crown of the head. Press the feet down, pull it up, tuck, squeeze your tail. Really focusing on that contraction in the upper back and then thinking about how those back of the legs open up to give us so 
some room as we come back with the booty, and then they're going to contract, squeeze, tuck your tailbone, squeeze your butt cheeks. Oh yeah, 30 seconds here. Remember the eyes are going to follow the shoulders. So they can come up the wall, and then they're going to go down the wall. And so you find the floor right in front of your eyes, right at parallel, tuck your tail, squeeze, 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 squeeze. This exercise can be 15. Challenging with no weight. Just by squeezing your butt and taking your time here. And you may or may not be a little sore in the back of your legs tomorrow. I apologize in advance. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. The best thing for you to do if you're sore tomorrow in the back of your legs is to hop on and do a workout with me tomorrow. It will loosen everything up. Or foam roll, I guess, but it would be much more fun if you worked out. All right, we're coming into that high point and shifting back into that downward facing dog. Arms are right below the shoulders, ready, begin. So press down into those hands, then pull the belly button in, lift the hips, take the eyes back to between the feet, and then we're gonna roll back forward. So your hands shouldn't have to move. You're shifting your weight right where you are, so taking that center of gravity and you're pulling it up and moving it back to your legs. Then shifting your weight forward back into your hands. Remember, if you start to have complaints from your wrists, you can drop to your forearms and you can actually do a light down dog on your forearms as well. Or you can just hold a plank. Whatever's gonna work best for you right now. It can help your wrists if you kind of suction cup your hands. And imagine gripping the floor with your fingers. That takes some pressure off your wrists too. 15 seconds. Amazing work. 10. Almost there. Here's five, four, three, two, one. Set those knees down. Roll the wrists out a little bit. Find your wall. Oh, yeah. I think the worst part is it's. I can't get a massage either. God only knows. When will we have to get to massage again? I don't know. All right, find your wall. Get all the way back against it. So we want to like press those shoulders up into the wall. If you don't have hair in your way, try to get the back of your head on the wall too. My ponies right away. All right, arms up in that W and go. So we're sliding up, pulling your kids down as the arms come up. And as you come down, you're going to pull your shoulder blades together. So almost like you were trying to, like you were, your arms were paint rollers and you're trying to paint the wall. You know how you got to kind of push in as you roll? I'm really bad at painting, but I at least have an idea that that's how it works. Push the weight up, now pull the weight down. So again, we might not have weight, but we can pretend we have weight. And that will make your muscles work harder. You can do that with your mind. It's crazy cool. Ten seconds. Oh my gosh, so close, so close. Here's five, four, three, two, last one. Oh, relax. While we rest for this last rest period, maybe roll your neck out a little bit, maybe the shoulders, maybe the wrists need a little work here. And then just, of course, a drink of water. I'm loving it. I love that you guys are hanging out. So often coming on to you guys every day, which is amazing. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep doing the thing. I'm gonna keep changing the workout up every day. Still extending that invitation to you guys. And if there's anybody that you would like to invite, they can uh, get on with these workouts too. 30 seconds here, and then we've got one more round. So we're starting with that hinge draw back, with or without a weight. Then we've got one minute there, one minute of high plank to down dog, and 45 seconds of wall slides, and then we're out, we're out, we're out. We'll be done for the day. <sighs> Last 10 seconds of rest. Nice deep breath in, big exhale out. <sighs> okay. If you're using your weight, go ahead and grab it. If not, let's take hands on hips. Everybody, shoulders back, chest out, frog position, and here we go. We're hinging forward. Push your butt back. Imagine you're trying to make contact with a wall behind you with your butt. Tuck your rib cage. Crown of the head is going forward. Keeping the shoulders squeezing nice and tight. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, squeeze. Oh, so good. If you're holding your weight, I really want you to make sure you're keeping your shoulders tight so that we are not rounding the back. That's the challenge when we add the weight. You feel a lot in your core, a lot in your shoulder blades. 30 seconds. This 
this is it. Remember the eyes are gonna follow over the head. So down the wall. So we're looking straight down at the floor. Then reverse it. Up at the top, pull it all in. You guys look amazing. 15 seconds. This is it. Really making sure that we're pushing that butt back. You should feel the weight back in your heels. Almost like you fall over backwards. If you weren't careful. Four, three, two, one. Good work. Set that weight down in your own weight. Find the mat on the floor. We're going to get that high going down dog. Or you can hold in your forearms. All right, three, two, ready, go. High plank. Shift the hips, let the weight come towards the legs. Then we're rocking that forward. Grip that floor with your fingers. Shift it back. Look between the feet. Rock it out. Amazing how much upper body strength we are using. You know, upper people sometimes don't realize until they do yoga. It's a lot of upper body work. So we can create strength without having dumbbells. I will say it is a lot of challenge on your wrist though. So if you're comfortable coming to forearms, try shifting your weight forward and back on your forearms. Still super challenging, maybe even more so on the shoulders. This one, but it's easier on the wrist. 15 seconds. Last time. Last time for these 10 seconds. You guys are awesome. Literally, we have less than a minute left in today's workout. Four, three, two, one. All right. Let's find that wall. We got wall slides and then we're done. So we're having to see all the way. Legs can be crossed, they can be out. You put them like this if it's comfortable. All that matters to me is that your low back from your tailbone up is such and form. Come into that W and slide it up. So here we are. If your wrists are really dense, so some folks have real tight wrists, try turning your palms in which can help with at least keeping that straighter than in this position here. We're just really working on trying to find as much contact as we can, and the more you do this over time, the better it will get. So that's why we do these when you guys are here at the studio with us all the time. Because if you do them all the time, you're gonna get a lot more range through your shoulders, and you're gonna have help in your shoulders. Don't let that back arch, so don't come away from the wall. Pull your ribs down, we've got 10 seconds here. My shoulders and back are burning, it feels good though. Push through. It's killing me to do this on a mirror, but it's the only wall that I have in this camera shot. Right, relax, oh good work, okay. So, we will start our stretch on the floor. If you need a quick drink of water, you can grab a quick drink of water, and then we are going to be on your back and do our regular stretch, starting with our figure four. So we will cross one ankle over the opposite knee. Somebody's, oh, dang, hang on. All right, someone was trying to join in, but we're almost done. We're gonna cross the ankle over that opposite knee, come into that figure four, and hold. And breathe, nice big deep breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Stretching that out. So if this is uncomfortable, you could drop that foot and just push your knee to feel that nice stretch. Just figure out what feels good to stretch out those hips today. The further you pull this in, the more we're going to get into the hips and the low back as well. And then we'll drop that down, we'll switch sides. So pulling that opposite thing. Nice deep breaths. Bring that system back down. In and out. Yes. Hold everything back down. I'm going to return that breathing to normal. From here, you can hug the knees and roll up to see it. Legs come straight out. And we are going to cross the right foot over the left knee. The left arm hugs the right knee, and then we twist to the right. So we're twisting over the leg. Then we're going to look to the right, and you want to sit up nice and tall. Yeah, stretching is like the dessert, you know? It's like, you get done with that hard workout and we get to stretch and kind of calm our body back down. It feels good. Going to switch sides. I did post a mobility and stretch routine in the Facebook group. I sent it in an email and I sent it in my coach. If you missed it and you want it, shoot me a message. It's a 15 second uh, follow along with me routine of just rolling through your joints and stretching out like our hips. Uh, hip flexors, low back. 
We don't want to neglect that stuff right now. When you're ready, you must stand up. That stuff's really important too. Hands come together, press through the shoulder blades and upper back, draw the belly in and spine. Hold that. Try to press your shoulders away from your ears. Nice big stretch out. So we're working on some yoga stuff too. I know Lauren is going to do a yoga stretch uh, at 11 o'clock on Thursday, I believe. We're just trying to figure out, like, between my schedule and her schedule, her client schedule, take the arms back. What works, but everything we do will record, and I'll keep sending out recordings as well, so if you guys miss stuff, you can still do it and follow along. She's doing some guided meditations, then I'll be sharing, like, real quick 10-minute breathing stuff. We're just kind of trying to team up and bring you all as many resources as we can. Um, everybody seems to really want and need the workout, so that is my main priority right now. Right arm across is just delivering that to y'all as easily as I can. So it's great to see you guys here and it's working well for you and it's helping. It helps me too. We're going to switch sides. I'm trying to work on um, getting a playlist in Spotify that we would be able to do the music and then you guys could play it at home if you wanted to have the music so we could be listening to the same music. We should have that worked out in a day or two. It's free. Doesn't cost anything. So that's just another fun thing. Hands to the thighs. So just like we did in that walk, and you want the eyes looking down, knees are bent. We're going to stretch through the back of the legs. If you straighten the legs a little bit, you'll get more stretch back here. And then if it's comfortable, you want a deeper stretch, you can slide the uh, hands down the legs. Looking at the floor, try not to crick your neck back. And then we're going to roll it all the way up. Shoulders up and back. From there, I always like to finish with two deep breaths. So inhale, stretch and reach. Exhale. We'll do one more nice big inhale, stretch your arms, reach up overhead. Exhale, blow it out through your mouth. 